Hi everyone. So in this uh, session, I am going to discuss the Arkham's theorem. In the previous session, I have already discussed how to convert an automata into a regular expression. So the very first method was we can convert an automata into a regular expression by removing states one by one. So that is a state removing kind of method. The second one is Arden's method or Arden's theorem. So let's discuss what is the Arden's theorem. I have already written here what is the Arden's theorem. Arden's theorem is uh, let's say you assume that uh, there is a equation given like there is P is a regular expression and Q is also a regular expression over the set of alphabet like epsilon or summation not the epsilon so if these two regular expressions are defined over this alphabet summation and if p does not contain any null value so p regular expression does not contain any null it just does not generate null right so that is the important condition you need to remember then the following equation let's say it is given so r is equal to Q plus RP. Okay. Now what Arden says that if this is the equation and if R is does not generating null, there is a unique solution for this regular expression or this equation like R is equal to QP star. So that was the theorem given by the Arden. Now first we need to check or we need to look for how the Arden has been given that particular thing and what is the validity of it. So if we want to validate this particular thing, let's say, so the very first thing we are validating it. So how we validate? Now our equation is given R is equal to Q plus RP. If Ardence's theorem, there is only one unique solution exists for this particular equation. Then let us replace this particular R with that particular value which Arden's is saying. So the unique solution is R is equal to QP asterisk. So if we replace here, it will give us Q plus instead of R I am writing QP asterisk followed by P. Right. So if I take or if we will take this Q as common, there will be epsilon plus P asterisk followed by P, right? So when we common take common something, like if I write Q epsilon, it will be Q only. So if you take Q as common, epsilon will left like this, right? And this thing we have already understood uh, in the previous class when we have discussed a number of regular expressions. Then P asterisk P will give us P positive closure, right? And if we write epsilon plus positive closure of something, it the meaning is the cleans closure of that, right? So this particular thing we can write Q epsilon plus this is P positive closure, and then this thing we can write Q followed by P asterisk, and this is equal to R. So this was the equation or the solution which was given by the Arden's. And because it is unique, so it is again, we are getting the same solution. So if we are considering in the beginning, finally we are getting the same thing. So it is a kind of valid solution, right? Now if you want to check how it has been derived, how Ardens has concluded this. So next thing we are looking for, how we can derive this solution. So let's say the equation is given here. We are having, let's say, R is equal to Q plus RP, right? Now, if we start, because this is a kind of recursive equation, R is defined in terms of R. So, if I start putting the same value here, now Q plus, instead of R, if I put Q plus RP followed by P, if I open this, it will give me Q plus QP plus RP square. Right now, if I again replace the same thing, so it will give me Q plus QP plus instead of R, I am writing Q plus RP P square. So it will give us Q plus QP plus 
cube b square plus r p to the power 3. Now, if we do again the same thing, what it will give us? q plus q p plus q p square plus q p q plus r p to the power 4, right? So, if we write dot dot dot, this will give us somewhere later on we will find out like q plus q p plus q p square let's say q to the power p to the power 3 plus dot 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 somewhere we will get q p to the power n plus next term will be r followed by p to the power n plus 1 right I hope you can understand this. So, if we are getting this, let's say in case we replace R because the Arden says that R will give us the unique solution like QP asterisk, which is written here. So, if we replace this R with that particular value, Q plus QP plus QP square plus QP to the power 3 plus dot 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 plus QP to the power n. Instead of this R, if we write QP asterisk PN plus 1. Now, if in this, if in this, we start taking this Q out, so here we will get epsilon plus P plus P square plus p to the power 3 plus dot 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 right and then p to the power n plus p asterisk p to the power n plus 1 right so this we will get now if you look at this particular series and specifically this term which is written p asterisk so if i write p asterisk or p cleans closer and multiplied with p to the power n plus 1 because this asterisk can be 0 or n number of things. So, whatever you write, like I told you in the previous discussion when we were discussing the properties of regular expression, if I write p asterisk dot p asterisk, then it will be equivalent to p asterisk only. And if I write any subset of p asterisk, let's say p asterisk, and if I write p to the power n and obviously n is less than the maximum possible value of this asterisk then it will also give me p asterisk only right i hope you are getting so what we can write this thing which is written here this thing we can write as p asterisk this p n to n plus 1 p to the power n plus 1 it doesn't affect the thing so i'm just cleaning it i'm just writing it p asterisk now, if I'm writing this thing, now this overall string, this, this overall sequence or series will give us P asterisk because ultimately all these things will be generated by P asterisk. So, because this is the subset or every this thing, or epsilon or P or P square, all are the subset of P asterisk. So, we can write it Q P asterisk. So, R ultimately we are getting like this and this was stated by Ardens. Okay, so this is a very very important property. Please do remember the Arden's theorem. I hope you understand how to validate it and how to drive it. So I'm closing this, and uh, in the next session, we will be solving the problem when automata will be given, and we'll be converting automata into the regular expression with the help of Arden's theorem. So thank you everybody for connecting. See you in the next class.